Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. Uh, over the holidays, I had the opportunity to make something that was actually going to be used by, you know, real people. Let me tell you a story about an application that I built and uh, I'm going to show you how to build the whole thing because I think it's pretty fun. Um, but it kind of starts out with a problem. And I think a lot of things start with a problem. So let me just get into it first. My friends have a party every year. It's a Christmas party or a holiday party, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, it's a pretty big deal. Everybody comes together. There's probably 30, 40 people that show up to the party every year. And they've gone to some pretty great lengths in order to get this party set up to a way where everybody can like have a, have a super fun time. And there's lots of bells and whistles and things like that. One of the things they've done is they set up a photo booth of sorts in one of their rooms in their house. Uh, their house is kind of like a like an L shape, and in one corner over here, they've got this back room. And they set up a you know a nice digital camera back there. Um, they got a remote control to take the pictures, and then there's a bunch of props and stuff, and and people come in and take pictures all night. Now. Over the years, uh, this has always been a huge hit, um, but we were discussing it one day. It was a couple weeks before the party or whatever. And I said, you know, it'd be really cool if you could get those photos in real time out to where everybody else is, not in the in the photo booth room. And they immediately jumped on it and they said, man, that would be so cool. What if we could get it on the big screen TV? And whenever somebody took a photo in the one room, it would show up in the other one. And that's when I opened my big mouth and I decided <laughs> I'm going to make an app to make this all work. And when I say app, I mean web app. But still, what I pitched to them was uh, an app that had a few different types of features, right? First off, it would solve the problem here of the photos in the photo booth. You would be able to go into the room where the photos were, you know, being taken uh, on, on the couch, all the props and stuff, take the photos uh, using a little clicker thing. And right when you took that picture, within a few seconds, it would show up in the TV in their living room where everybody else was. Uh, when no one was taking pictures at the time, the system would automatically go back into just kind of scrolling through the, the previous photos of the night. And uh, it had to work obviously on a big screen TV. Um, and then I added one more thing, which was the ability for people to log into this on their phones and upload photos that they've taken with their own phones and they show up on the screen as well. And, you know, I, I thought, this sounds like fun. I'll, I'll whip this thing together. It won't take very long. It took a little bit longer than I expected, not because it was necessarily hard, but because it's just, yeah, I can only work on it for an hour or so every day. Um, but at the end of the day, it turned out really cool and a lot of people liked it. So I thought today I will go over that application, show you what I did, how I made it, and you could do something similar. Or you could obviously just steal it from me from GitHub, make your modifications and do whatever you want. So first off, let me just kind of show you how it works since it's already built, um, it's easy enough. On the screen now, you're seeing what somebody would see on their phone when they first go to the app. There is a login. I've already passed that. I'll show you how to do that part too. But you can see here, you can just select an image and it'll open up a, a thing on the computer. Obviously, it's the file browser, but on a phone, it'll take a, take an image immediately or let you choose from your photo library and, and upload a photo. There's not a whole lot to it. You upload a photo. It says, thanks, success. Everything's all set. And then this is what shows up on the big screen TV. It just keeps rolling through them uh, and it'll show you the newest ones immediately. So when somebody takes a photo, timestamp tells the system just to show that new photo and then it starts scrolling through the old ones over and over and over again and i added a little bit of timestamp magic over here i think it looks pretty nice so now let's talk about at a high level all the different pieces of this because there's quite a bit to it and i think i probably over engineered it a little bit but that's the fun in it right so uh let's let's talk through those pieces probably the first part is the server bit um the server i wrote in go and i used a uh a web server package called Jin, and it handles essentially everything that has to be served, right? So I have some REST endpoints. I have one for uploading a photo. I have one for logging in. I have one for checking if you're logged in. And I have one that will continuously send you information about a new photo uh, so that the TV can display it as they're as they're being loaded. Um, the server side also serves the front end if you if you catch my drift here, right? So front end application still needs a server. Uh, the front end is written in Vue.js. Again, probably overkill. I'm not a front end developer. Vue.js looked like it was easy enough to use, so I just kind of went with it. Uh, it serves the 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 front end experience that the that the user actually sees, and that's the stuff I just showed you on the screen there. Then there's a couple other little little bits and pieces inside the server, right? A couple things that I ran into that were a little more difficult than you would expect would be one um, the 
the photo processing and two, uh, Apple's wonderful high efficiency image, uh, format. So the HEIC format, you have to convert, I had to be able to convert that to JPEG. And then also I had to be able to rotate the images depending on the photo, um, orientation that the, that the photo was taken in on like somebody's device. So that was a little complicated. Uh, the server also has a database, so when a photo is added, the photo is uploaded to a directory on the server, and then it is logged that the photo is there. And the reason we had to do that is because we had to keep a timestamp of when the photo was last shown, and that's how we keep track of what photo gets shown next. And if a new photo is added, then the timestamp is zero, and it knows to show that one next, and it keeps rolling through the pieces. After I had the front end of the server built, I obviously needed to deploy it somehow, so I packaged this with Docker. Um, it does use SQLite for the database, so I needed a container that had SQLite. So it has to build the or transpile the front end, uh, the Vue.js, into basic JavaScript. It has to build the Go application into a binary, and it has to package it all together in a Docker container where the container has the ability to run the server as well as run the SQLite database. And then finally, uh, I deployed this to Kubernetes on GCP because I didn't want it to crash uh, as the party was going on. And I didn't really want it running on a laptop a Helm chart that describes the entire thing. I wrote a simple script that kind of builds and deploys the whole thing, pushes it up to GCP. And then the final part was that whole photo booth thing. So as people take photos, the, the camera in that room is connected to a laptop. And I wrote just a little Go application that will look for new photos to arrive in the folder. When they show up, it hits the post endpoint of the server and uploads the new photo. It goes in and it acts just like any other, any other photo being added. So from a device or from that little application, the photos are just fed in exactly the same way. So that's the whole application. And, uh, now I want to get into the bits and pieces. And I think the way that I'm going to go through, through this, since I already wrote the application, and honestly, nobody wants to sit here and see me struggle through writing the thing. So what I'm going to do is a code review style of tutorial, where I'm going to walk through all of the pieces of this and how they work and what they do. And that should help you to understand exactly what this does. And, you know, I my personal belief on this is that if you really wanted to use this thing as it sits, then you would just take it. I'm going to put it on GitHub. You can have it for free. The purpose of this is to show you that anything is possible if you really think through it and plan it out. And if you wanted to make something similar, uh, these are the steps that you can use to do it yourself. So uh, next thing to go through here is the server where I'm going to walk through the Go code and, uh, and take it step by step. All right, so there's the basic breakdown of the applications, all the pieces and parts. Uh, this is going to be a series because I really wanted to break this down into like 10 minute chunks. So in the next part, we're going to go through the server in the back end, and I will see you there.